Good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing? It's Nicole. I'm doing well. It's kind of a dreary day out there today. It still has not been super warm here in Chicago. Waiting for that to happen, um, but I still love living in the Midwest, I will say that. <laughs> Just a little tidbit here, you know, God knows where we're called to live. So anyway, this morning, um, hope you got your coffee. Ah, I love coffee. It's a gift from God. But anyway, <laughs> um, I'm feeling silly today. I don't know why, but you know what? That's It's all good. It's all good. I was depressed for so many years that it's okay to be silly. So, um, but this morning I wanted to just, you know, I felt led, you know how sometimes you're just doing everyday life and, and you might hear a scripture in your mind and God speaks to me like that from sometimes and I'll just hear something and then I'll go look it up and I heard Psalm 34 so I went and looked it up and um, I mean I know a lot of the verses in there but I didn't realize they were all contained in Psalm 34 at the time and I'm like man that is a power packed Psalm and so the Word of God is powerful the Word of God is for us today. And so it is important that we rightly divide the word between the old covenant and the new covenant because some not the whole Bible was written uh, for us, but not everything was written to us. So anyway, it's important that we understand that we are on the other side of the cross and we are in a new covenant. But the word of God is powerful and I love unpacking some of the Psalms. And so I decided this morning to um, just look up the Hebrew words in Psalm 34, just out of curiosity, because it, it can uh, really just kind of, I like giving definitions and synonyms and looking up the Greek and Hebrew, because for me personally, it really helps the word to come alive. And so, um, it starts out with, I'm just going to go line by line and I'm not going to, you know, um, say some things about every verse, but Psalm 34, and I'm reading in the New King James Version, um, one through three says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. You know, I think about that, my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. And I've heard the expression that when we are going through trials, um, we need to not, you know, we need to remember that God is bigger. God is bigger than anything that we face. And we can praise him because he has given us the victory in Jesus Christ. And so, when I think about boasting in the Lord, it's like, you know what, God, I might be going through this, but you are so much bigger. And I just thank you, Jesus, that you have given me the victory in this area. And that's kind of what I'm taking from this. And you might get something else. The other thing is that, you know, praising the Lord and giving thanks to the Lord is not a work. Um, it is something I believe that pe people can make it a work. And sometimes people feel like if they do that, they're going to get extra points with God. Well, that's not the case. God is God. He does not need our praises. He is already fulfilled. He, he doesn't need us to fill a void in him. We need him to fill the void in us. But when we understand how good God is and what Jesus did in going to the cross for us all for love, that is when we will just automatically praise the Lord and give thanks to the Lord. I remember doing, and I did a teaching on this, um, you know, weeks ago on studying the passion of the cross and what Jesus went through on the cross. And I got to tell you, after I was studying this, I just automatically fell deeper in love with Jesus. 
I started thanking Jesus for going to the cross, thanking Jesus for enduring all that he endured, which was a lot so that we could be free. And so I believe it is as we understand the love and the goodness of God, that's when we continually praise him. So just wanted to throw that in there. But um, Psalm 34, um, 4 through 7, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant. And another version says, those who look to him are radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Now, I was looking up the word delivered here where it says, I sought the Lord. Actually, you know what? I'm going to come back to that. Um, but delivered me. That that Hebrew word for deliver is not sal. And it means to rescue, recover, deliver from, deliver from enemies and trouble, deliver us from death, deliver us from sin and guilt. That's a big one. So Jesus came on the cross and became our sin and gave us the gift of righteousness. And now there in Romans 8, 1 says there is no condemnation for us. So Jesus delivered us from sin and guilt. And we have to remember that truth when guilt and shame comes in, especially after we've missed the mark or sinned or fallen short. We need to remember that Jesus delivered us from condemnation and guilt and we do not need to live in that place. The enemy will make you want to live in that place. But Jesus says, I delivered you from sin and guilt. Thank you, Jesus. That's not even our nature anymore, <laughs> our sin nature. Um, anyway, we have a righteousness nature now, which is so good. Um, and it actually... Uh, it's interesting, there, the definition, some other definitions of deliver there are to snatch away or defend. And so they gave the image of, and I hate this image because I'm an animal lover, but you know what? Things happen in life <laughs> and I get over it, but I'm, I'm very sensitive. I can't even kill an ant half the time, okay? I know some of you are going to be like, oh my goodness, but anyway... Um, but think about an animal that comes and gets a, a prey in its mouth and snatches it away and goes. That's what that means. Imagine God taking your fears, delivering you from your fears and snatching them away, never to be returned. I mean, that's a very cool image if you think about it. He snatches them away. He delivers us from them. And that is good news. And so... Um, and delivered me from all my fears. So I looked up the Hebrew word for fears in that verse. And obviously it means fear and terror. But it also comes from two words. And I, I was very interested in this because I didn't understand it. And I'm like, I got to Google this further to understand because I know there has to be a reason for it. It also means granary or storehouse, which of course they had tons of those back then because they didn't have the stores and stuff that we have. And so that word fear comes from two words, terror and dwelling place. Think about a granary, the 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 storehouse the the grains are are dwelling in there they're stored in there so it actually means dwelling place of fear and so it's saying that god delivers us from the dwelling place of fear now think about that um david was talking about 
getting rid of his fears, God helping him, and keeping the fears of terror in a storehouse of fear. So imagine a storehouse of fear, you know, on your property. And anytime you're afraid, you go put the, the fears in the storehouse of fear instead of keeping feeding on those fears. You know, granary is food. So what I, my question is, is your heart a dwelling place of terror or fear? And this is not a condemnation question at all. I, there, I have been delivered of so many fears. I am so grateful and fear is not from God. And God wants us free from all fears and he wants to help us in that. Remember, he has compassion on you. He's not up there going, and I know some ministers will be like, suck it up, stop fearing, you know. That's not, I don't believe that's how God does it. He, he is gentle with us. He's saying, I want to help you in this. I want to show you that I'm good. I want to show you that I'm for you and not against you. And you don't need to fear because I am with you. I will protect you. I will defend you. And the list goes on. But I want to encourage you, if that is the case, what are you feeding on? And I have to ask myself that question sometimes. What am I feeding on? Because I will notice, and sometimes it's what's in the media right now, nowadays, and I'll tell you, that's a big one. And I want to know what's going on in the world, but there comes a time when it's like crosses the line where I'm like, wait a minute here, I'm starting to just get some anxiety or fear, and I don't want that, so I'm going to stop feeding on this and go to some good news. And so, you know, I, God gave us the word to feed on and it, you know, the word is full of truth. The enemy is full of lies. So he will come and lie to us nonstop and wants us to feed on those lies that he's feeding us, including lies that you don't measure up, that you're not good enough, um, that you're a failure you know, and those are lies from the pit of hell. But when we feed on those lies, then we experience guilt and condemnation and depression and the list goes on. And it, and it holds us back, to be honest with you. Now, I'm going to give an example here. I am, uh, you know, opening up. I'm going, to, I think I had told you guys that I started making candles and I really, it's just so much fun. I mean, God put that in my life for a reason and I've always loved candles and they're non-toxic soy candles and it kind of progressed rather quickly, but also I was researching and, you know, feeding on how to make the candles properly. I was making mistakes so that I could learn the right way to do it. And it's just interesting. You know, I thought I was gonna start selling them sooner than I did, and I realized, and I even posted it on Facebook, look, all those candles that I showed you that I made, you know, that some people thought looked really good, I said, those were candles I made to show everything that I was doing wrong with it. But anyway, so, God opened up an opportunity. I believe he put it on my heart and some things happened where I am going to be a week from today, actually, selling my candles in a local boutique that has a lot of vendors are in there and they rent space and stuff like that. And there are other candle vendors in there. But my labels, um, there's not a lot of Christian stuff in there. There's only one other place that sells some Christian stuff in there. So um, I'm excited because my candles have different labels. You know, like he lo we love because he first loved us, fearless, forgiven. Um, today is a good day. I mean, they're all positive uh, labels, but they're not toxic. But I will tell you, I, the, the enemy has been wanting me to feed on fear and 
and and not open the store and think about all the things that could go wrong. What if people don't like my candles? What if someone's house burns down? Well, I have all the little warning labels on there and I can't control what people do. But I had to get candle insurance, believe it or not, to sell candles. And I'm just doing it because in this world system, you know, you need to do certain things. But, you know, if I had dwelled on and many 99% of people burn candles safely. You know, you're not supposed to leave it unattended. I'm telling you right now, in case you get my any of my candles, don't leave it unattended and trim your wick. But anyway, um, you know, if I were to feed on all those fears and, and I noticed that when I was listening to those lies, I was experiencing some fear and anxiety. And then I had to go to the truth. And, and actually, it's only a six-month lease. If worse comes to worse, I don't sell them there. God has a place, you know. But I had to start going back to the truth that, God, you opened this door. I know you did because you spoke to me multiple times and I was approved and they could have rejected me. There's lots of things that I could say. But the thing is, fear will hold you back. If And, and it, sometimes we have to push through those fears the enemy doesn't want us doing new things. He doesn't want us stepping out into things that God called us to. But I encourage you to not listen to that voice. I mean, I had lots of those voices with the Hope Center, Ministry Center that I opened up a few years ago. And to be honest with you, there are a lot of things that are coming at me now where I'm like, should I keep it? Should I sell it? you know, just lots of things. And, and I was actually up in the middle of the night last night thinking about some things, but I woke up this morning and I, I felt God's peace. And he said, listen, everything's going to be all right. And all those things you're talking about, we have time to take care of them. So I'm just telling you my walkout process. You know, you guys know, most of you that I've been delivered from a severe mental illness, uh, panic attacks, just lots of different things. But that doesn't mean that I don't, that all my thoughts are perfect all the time. Now, because I was worrying about something last night, and by the way, that's why I can preach it because I know what it does to you. When you meditate and feed on fearful thoughts, you will experience fear and anxiety. Um, now I lost my train of thought. But basically, that doesn't mean everything has been perfect, but I will tell you, because I, even though I was doing that last night, does that make me not healed? Absolutely not. I'm totally healed in Jesus' name. Nothing changes the fact that I am healed and I am growing and I am learning and I am grateful. And guess what? As time has gone on, this is my 15th year, thank you, Jesus, of, of more and more freedom you're able to get out of these things quicker, you know, and, and like I've talked about before, when you've gone through a lot of trauma, sometimes it, it can be, it can take time to get out of that, you know, norm that you lived in for many years. So I am nowhere near, <laughs> nowhere near where I am, was years ago, but I want to tell you that I want to be real with you and I want to share with you things that I also need to walk out in my everyday life and put the word into practice. So I'm not just here, you know, saying, hey, you know, I encourage you guys to do this and not have to do it myself. So I just wanted to share that with you. But I will say too that, you know, when I was in the bondage of just the bipolar disorder, I had a fear of death, I had a fear of storms, I had a fear of getting in trouble. I had so many fears. And it's interesting, as soon as I got that revelation, you know, that sparked hope and healing in me, that Jesus paid the price for my healing and that I had authority over the enemy and the list goes on and I started renewing my mind and soaking my mind up with books and, and the word um, and books that had the word in them on authority and healing and everything else, I'll tell you, those fears started dissipating. Like I used to be petrified of tornadoes. And, you know, around here where I live, there are tornado warning things that go off all the time. Not one time have I 
lived in a tornado and all that. But before I used to cower in fear. And now I know, I know I'm, you know, we got to be safe too, but those warning lights go off and I'm walking around in my kitchen doing what I need to do. I, I have like zero fear with it. And there is wisdom though. I'm not saying this for you, but I just want to show you how far I have come in that. I mean, when it used to, um, there was lightning in a storm, I used to grab on to Claude and like hold on to him super tight because I was so scared that a lightning strike would hit our house. I mean, those are the kinds of fears that I'm like, thank you, Jesus, that you snatch those fears away. Like I had said earlier in that verse that you delivered me from those fears. And so just, I encourage you, what are you feeding on? Leave those fears in the storehouse of, of fear and say, bye-bye and walk away. Um, and then the verse right here, I'm not getting very far in this, but I'll tell you, it's been fun to, to look this up. Um, where is it? Hold on. Sorry about that. I'm on my computer. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. It's that, that Hebrew word for heard me actually means to answer or respond. Um, and that word sought the Lord, the Hebrew word, if you break it down, actually means to make an inquiry, to seek after, to question. Have you ever had questions you had to ask God? <laughs> Do you still have questions? Yeah. Um, and it actually means studied too. But, you know, I think about that is that really it's relationship with God. We can go to him for everything. It also means seek with the idea of demanding, which is very interesting. So we, I believe we can remind God of his promises you know, when if, if a symptom comes in our body and we're like struggling with it, one, we can speak to that symptom and command it to go and, you know, just feed on the word. However it is for you, focus on God's love. Say, help me, Jesus. But I believe we can say, Father, I'm reminding you that you say in your word that by his by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed in Isaiah 53, 5. And you know what? I might be going through this right now, but that is the truth. And I expect that to happen, healing to manifest in my body. Thank you, Father, for helping me with that, you know. And so, you know, this David had a relationship with God. In fact, all of the, who wrote this psalm, all of Psalm 23 is, I did a study on Psalm 23. You guys have heard me talk about it. It's written from David and it's written from the perspective of a well cared for sheep that has a good shepherd. So God knew or David knew that God was good. David had a relationship with God. David knew God taking care of all of his needs and he could go to God for anything. And it's the same for us. He wants us to go to him for everything. He wants us to talk to him. He wants us to pour our heart heart out to him. And yes, I am honest, honest and raw and real. Um, and, and I am a verbal processor, which means that sometimes I got to get it out. And, but I don't, and you know, some people will be like, well, you know, and I used to feel this way too. Well, the enemy can hear you and all this. Well, guess what? I'm going to go back to what I said in the very beginning. God is bigger than that. God is bigger. And so I don't stay there. I go back to the truth and God reminds me of the truth. Um, but David didn't hold back. You know, he didn't even hold back in the Psalms when you think about it. And so anyway, I could go on and on with that. And then um, they looked to him and were radiant. And that word radiant means shine or beam. And Actually, I, I was thinking about that as I saw that, that, you know, years ago when I was going to a church and I was on the prayer chain for everything because of the bipolar disorder, we all believed it was incurable. 
Um, nobody knew how my story would end, including myself. There was always something going on. I was in the psych ward. It was, it was really a horrible time. Horrible, horrible, horrible. And talk about the guilt and condemnation I felt about my family having to experience what they did as I was going through this. I am so grateful that it said that Jesus delivers us from guilt and shame. And if w some of you out there are still kind of experiencing guilt and shame from that, and God wants you to let it go. He's saying, you know what? I, Jesus delivered you of that. Don't carry that anymore. That's the past. There are better things ahead for, for you and God heals families. We have to trust him that he heals um, families. But I used to walk with my head down in shame in church and just, I felt less than, I felt defective all the time. Just gonna be honest with you. And um, that was my entire childhood actually, is I felt less than and defective and like I didn't measure up. But remember in Christ, you are never defective. You measure up because Jesus measured you up. God will never conv convey to you or say to you that you are less than in any way, shape or form. And I actually put that on Facebook today. So remember that that's not who God is. But after I got the revelation that God was not withholding healing from me and that in fact, I qualified because of Jesus, Jesus qualified me and that healing, he purchased that for everyone and we just receive it. That changed my countenance. I was beaming, I was radiant when I started to understand that God is a good God. He wasn't mad at me. He wasn't withholding from me. And people in the church came up to me and said, you are glowing, what happened to you? And so I would share with them about Jesus. And I, and so I just wanna, I, I know you guys know this, but we can see Jesus and other people. You know, people know when we've been with Jesus. And that has actually drawn me to some friends that I have is that I saw Jesus in them. And you can see when you are feeding on the word of God, feeding on Jesus, feeding on relationship with him, you're not going to want to go back to that storehouse of fear. You're going to go to a storehouse of Jesus and his life, which is joy, peace, healing, and everything that we could ever need. And that is good news. And so um, I'm going to go to one more verse here. Um, oh, wait, right here. Man, there's so much good in just these several verses here. They look to him. Okay, I, I'm just going to go back. He's, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. Oh, that's right. That's what I wanted to go to here. Oh, where is that? Because that was really good. Oh, here we go. Yes, I wanted to say that. Their faces were not ashamed. <clears throat> and I think other versions say put to shame or something like that. But the Hebrew word for that means disgraced humiliated, confounded, abash, which means to make someone feel embarrassed, disconnected, and ashamed. And so here's the deal. God will never humiliate us. He will never make us feel embarrassed or ashamed because Jesus delivered us from shame and humiliation. Jesus was humiliated on the cross so that we don't have to live in humiliation in any way, shape, or form. And I remember, you know, as I was uh, just getting invitations to speak and stuff like that, of course, the enemy, you know, fear of public speaking is one of the biggest fears there is. <laughs> All you have to do is ask people, and it exists in the Christian world and the, and the, and the secular world, okay? But... When you have Jesus, it's completely different. But how many of you know that voice will come in and tell you, oh, you're not qualified because the enemy wants us to stay in the storehouse of fear and not step out into who God called us to be. 
And so I just remember I was afraid of one of these speaking things. I was nervous and, you know, and I have to stand against that. You know, I really do from time to time because, you know, it's, that doesn't mean I'm defective. It means the enemy wants to shut me up and he ain't going to shut me up. Um, anyway, by the way, I'm going to throw this in here. <laughs> and then of course I'm losing, um, track, track with that. But, um, wait, what was I going to say about that? The fear he wants to shut us. Oh, let me just say this and then I'll go back to this little funny thing, but it's actually true. Um, God said to me, I'm not going to put you in a situation where you're humiliated or embarrassed. I'm on your side. I open this door for you. Trust me. And so you can take that for wherever you want, um, but he never makes us feel humiliated or embarrassed. The enemy does, but he's the father of lies, but God is the truth. But talking about the de devil wanting to shut me up, when I was a teenager, you know, I used to go out and get drunk all the time with my friends and but we were going to a very spirit-filled church, you know, at the time. And that's why I thought God was mad at me all the time because I was go out and get drunk. Now, that wasn't good, I'm, I'm going to say. Um, but I was numbing the pain that I didn't really express to anyone at the time. Nobody knew my story. I did not open up about my story until years later. But I remember they were doing a Ouija board in the other room and I knew that was wrong. I knew that was demonic. I knew it was the devil operating that thing. And I was like, I'll tell you right now, even with a few drinks in me, I went over into that room and I pointed to that thing and I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I didn't know what to say, but that's what I said. And wouldn't you know it, that that devil on that Ouija board, my friends told me, wrote out, shut up with my name. Okay. And so, <laughs> I mean, I'll never forget that. I was like, wow, you know, and I'm like, no, I ain't shutting up, but the enemy will try to get us to shut up. And you know what? We're not shutting up. Anyway, there you go. I'm just throwing that in there. Um, but Anyway, that, I think that's about it. That's what I'm going to say on there. But, you know, O oh, taste and see, verse 8 and 9. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. And so, you know, the thing is, when we understand God's love and his goodness and his true nature, we will automatically trust him and receive from him. And so... Hope you guys got some things from this psalm today. I know I did. And I want to do more of this with you guys. I really enjoy doing this and just breaking down and looking up some of the Hebrew and Greek and just take a psalm or a few verses here and there. That's really my passion. And I haven't, I've, I've, been, I've been doing a lot of encouraging. That's usually what I do. But I want to get back into some of the the teaching mode that I've used that I used to do. So anyway, I hope you guys have an amazing day. And if you're a visual person like me, just remember if you leave with that whole thing of the storehouse of fear and leaving them there like see you later and what you're feeding on, why am I experiencing that? And then go back to the truth, go back and seeking the Lord, go back and he will remind you of the truth. He will give you some scriptures, like he gave me Psalm 34. And you know, as I was driving, you know, if you just step out in faith, if you hear that little voice. And so anyway, I hope you guys got something. And I, you know, for those of you, uh, that are going to be watching. Don't forget, we're having the Healing Journeys Conference in Arizona next weekend. And so you can watch live uh, from the, I believe, the Facebook and YouTube thing. I can't remember what it is, but you'll be able to see it and you'll be able to watch it live. So look into that. Go to the Facebook page and they'll show you how. And for those of you that are going in person, please make sure and come up and give me a hug. All right.